How many of you know what it means to be a minority in two countries? I am an Indian American Muslim female, but what does that really mean? It means I have been a minority in India, the country where I was born and grew up in, and a minority in America, the country where I have lived for the last 30 years. My journey of being a minority has not been without struggle, yet, it has also taught me a lot. I was born in the suburbs of Bangalore in South India to parents who had already struggled, survived, and made it successfully. Often over dinner, my father would quote stories of his struggles and how he conquered the challenges to become an amazing and brilliant surgeon. My five siblings and I were taught to not use our minority status as a victim card. Our parents raised us to have integrity, to give to others, to approach life with self-confidence, tenacity, hard work, and fearlessness. Still, it was tough. The first time I faced discrimination when I was only 10. No matter how hard I tried academically, I couldn't seem to cross that line that was pre-designated, it seemed. So frustrated, I went to my father and said, Dad, I don't think I'll ever be number one. My dad looked at me with sympathy and said, yes, it's a challenge that he and many countless minorities have always faced. Instantly, he taught me to look for a solution. My first important lesson was to analyze my terrain calmly and to try to understand human nature. My father always said, given your 100%, and if that doesn't work, give you 200%, and if that doesn't work, give you 2000%, because there's no substitute for hard work and ultimately compel to own what you deserve. My father's lessons didn't stop there. He said, prepare yourself for the worst, but also be your very best. His favorite line was, don't limit yourself to your immediate surroundings. The world is full of amazing challenges. The sky is the limit. My father taught me about humility as well, as he reminded me that there would be at least one person who would be better than me, prettier than me, and smarter than me, and that that was okay. What good is a life without challenge, he'd say with a smile. Finding a lot of challenges in the life of minorities was never a problem, and there is residue from this. For example, the Journal of American Medical Association of Pediatrics reported there, was, there were more suicides amongst African-American children, ages 5 to 11, than white children, and suicide attempts in Hispanic girls was 50% more than those of white girls. And currently, American Muslims experience a significant bias against them. A report by the Pew Foundation found 75% of Indian Muslims in America felt that they were being discriminated, and 32% of them felt that they were treated with suspicion. As of 2018, doctors of Indian origin in America, such as myself, account for 18% of the doctors in spite of the discrimination. And that is almost 222,000 doctors. Growing up, I learned a lot from my dad. He chose a pawn as a teaching tool. And he asked me to look at it very closely. I did. I found slush, the plants, algae, soggy, twisted slime, dirty, muddy waters, floating leaves, fish, moths, butterflies, and then this beautiful lotus in full blossom. My father said the world is just like the pond with everything you observed, but all you need to focus on is that lotus that came out of that same pond surviving and pulling out all the elements to become the most awesome representative of that otherwise unattractive pond. When challenged, I was taught to take the good, emerge in my uniqueness, get past the obstacles and stay afloat. If you submerge or feel like a victim, you become the bottom of that pond. 
But, but remember, my father would say, you need the pond to stay afloat. So if you learn to take its good, then also learn to deal with the bad. And if you do, someday you could shoot up like this beautiful lotus, distinguished and unique. That was my father, always bringing light to an otherwise dismal state. And when he did, life did get easier. When faced with discrimination, I'd remind myself, study your terrain, the bad is the slush, stay afloat and be a lotus. So in high school, I broke out of what was normally taboo for a Muslim girl by becoming a gymnast. I also trained to do slow horseback march for the opening ceremony of our sports day. I won accolades in arts and dramatics. I was even elected school president. I moved on. I refused to let any box contain me as I crawled out of many of my labels. I then became a literary champion in college. And in medical school, I was crowned the Freshie Queen and also bagged the title of versatile genius. In 2017, I was selected as one of the top 10 Indian American women achievers given by the Indian Academy. Many victories, but my siblings and I continue to face hardship. I believed that if my family moved to America, we would do better. Here in this country, I knew we'd have a fair opportunity. Consumed with zeal and hope, I completely forgot and discounted that we were going to be minorities yet again, just in a new country. And it wasn't long before we faced rejection and more rejection. My brother put in 2000% aspiring to be getting a state rank and he was brushed off like he, it was insignificant. And in the US, he was also denied residency initially, but his resilience and hard work helped him get into Yale and the Mayo Clinic and also win the prestigious Young Investigators Award given by the American Academy of Gastroenterology. Meanwhile, the medical director decided to cut my internship off stating that she didn't approve of immigrants. So in the last minute, I was forced to go find an internship in Boise, Idaho with my two month old daughter and my mother. Resiliency helped me return to come and become she president and faculty in neurology. And I was honored when I was told that I had raised the standard of the very university that had actually denied me my internship. As I succeeded, I began to relax. I almost forgot that a minority's challenges never go away. In 2013, Homeland Security showed up at my door and falsely accused me of human trafficking. The case progressed and in 2018, I was accused and wrongfully indicted by the federal government. A press release was circulated and even though I was innocent, my public life was destroyed. Criminal justice system often makes it extremely difficult to navigate the system, especially for minorities. I would know as I was accused of a crime. I felt the full brunt of the power of the federal government and saw just how complex and how horrifically difficult it was to navigate the system, more so for a female minority. Would this happen to me if I were not an immigrant, a woman and a minority? I will always wonder. I had heard of similar stories happening to other minorities. I never thought it would happen to me. It was a challenge and shock that my father had not prepared me for. Suddenly I realized that my skills built on integrity, giving to others, self-confidence and hard work were not enough, nor was the vision of the lotus and the pond. It was the hardest situation I had ever faced in my entire life when my community started rejecting me and we felt isolated. My children and I lost many of our friends, or at least the ones we thought were our friends. I was bullied on social media. My good name and the reputation I had worked so hard for was destroyed. I developed health issues from severe stress. All of the success I'd worked hard to create crumbled. How much more, I asked. Ultimately, the system worked when a good friend referred an amazing lawyer who actually cared about justice. And after seven long years of an 
indescribable struggle. He helped me get the case dismissed. But the damage had been done. Being accused of a crime is devastating and I wish it on no one. But it breaks my heart to think what happens to those who cannot afford to fight their battles and claim their innocence? The challenge took an incredible toll on me, both emotionally and physically, and still haunts me every day. Yet, I continue to reach deep, searching my soul to find the words of my father, that vision of that lotus. In all honesty, it's hard, but now, I put my 2,000% towards helping me to heal. This is what I've learned. Challenges can spring out of nowhere, and usually they surprise us. But anger and retaliation will push you down to the bottom of the pond, and unclear forces will continue to try to push you down. But just like the lotus fixates only on the sun's rays to navigate out of the darkest depth of the pond, I have experienced that faith can help you emerge victoriously and that right has the ultimate mind. In today's world, everyone wants instant gratification in an unexplored terrain. This is an invitation for anyone who is a minority and for that matter for all of us to completely step away from the box labeled victim. That is freedom. Building yourself as a person and not a label will make you the unstoppable, best authentic version that you are meant to be. We may have cultural and physical differences, even religious, religious diversity, our differences are endless. But it's important for us to realize that one cannot and should not be forced into a box or a label. Collectively, we should aspire to help our uniqueness and allow for diversity inclusively. And finally, let us take fear of the word minority. None of us are minorities. Have you looked at the definition of minority? It states anything that's less than half. It's a numerical value. So is it conceivable that 49 is a minority and 51 a majority? And if so, can we not bridge this gap? Minority is a minuscule. I invite you to be inspired by the lotus that holds the, its own amidst the slush and darkness. Now, I own mine. Fearlessly claim your identity as I did. I gathered the pieces of my life and my children, carrying the legacy of my father, striving and trying hard to bring back that resilience and seek me for just that one fair chance to reclaim my identity. Every minority just asks for that one fair chance. I look forward to a pond of lotuses, full of it, together creating a vivacious culture of love, peace, and justice. And when we do, I believe there is going to be a rainbow looming above our heads, reminding us that when all of the people in the world set aside their differences and unite, that is when we will get our pot of gold. And to do this, we can start by becoming a lotus. Thank you.